When Tolkien was withdrawn from the line um, in the action he'd seen just more or less to the south of here, over here, um, on the 21st of July, he was made the battalion signaling officer uh, for the Lancashire Fusiliers. He uh, was still recovering from um, finding out that his great friend from school, Rob Gilson, one of the TCBS, had been killed on the very first day of the Battle of the Somme. He only just received that news, but then quite quickly on the 24th of July, he was positioned somewhere behind me uh, there on that ridge in some trenches. Uh, to my left is Beaumont Hamel, just down in the valley there is Hamel, and just beyond that is Ocean Vies. Uh, what he was facing, where we're standing now, is the Schwaben Redoubt. Uh, and this is a, a ruined German machine gun post from the Schwaben Redoubt. And this was one of the German strongholds which, which it took the British uh, many, many weeks to capture. Tolkien was mainly trying to again set up his communications uh, network behind those lines to get signals back to sort of allow the people to understand what was happening on the front line. But you can just see the tactical disadvantage that the British had. We're on a very, very high piece of ground here, uh, looking down onto the lower ground where the British uh, were positioned. Tolkien was positioned just south of Theatre Wood, facing the German stronghold of the Leipzig salient. After four days there, he was taken out of the line and given three weeks recreation and rest at Busancourt. By that time, he'd already seen about two months of continued fighting and trench duty. However, on the 27th of September, he returned to the line again at Theatre Wood. Throughout his time at Theatre, Tolkien had to live with the destruction of battle. They lie in all the pools, pale faces, deep, deep under the dark water. I saw them, grim faces and evil, noble faces and sad, many faces proud and fair with weeds in their silver hair, but all foul, all rotting, all dead. Here nothing lived, not even the leprous growths that feed on rottenness. The gasping pools were choked with ash and crawling muds, sickly white and grey, as if the mountains had vomited the filth of their entrails on the lands about. So we come now to the end of uh, Tolkien's story in terms of the Great War. Uh, this was the last uh, location where he, he experienced battle. Um, on the 6th of October 1916, he was based in Mucky Farm, um, and then he was brought up to somewhere near this area. Behind me, you can see Regina Trench Cemetery. Um, that is the place of Regina Trench, which was the objective. Tolkien's troops were brought up here in the, on the 12th of October. Um, he was, uh, suffered a tear gas attack along with the rest of his men. Then they came back into the line um, and the objective was to take that trench. On the 21st of October, uh, around midday, the Fusiliers went in and um, attacked Regina Trench. Uh, Tolkien was the battalion signal officer, so he wasn't involved in those wave of attacks. Um, his job was to maintain communications with headquarters towards the rear. If you look at the hill, you can see faint discolorations, whitest patches in the soil. That's telltale damage of um, shells. As well as the uh, normal harvest that you would get in a ploughed field like this, you can see what's known as the iron harvest here, a couple of shells, um, probably from the battle um, that Tolkien took part in to take Regina Trench. The battle was successful. Um, and Tolkien was drawn from the front line on the 27th of October 1916. Standing here in front of the French War Memorial in Bouzincourt, uh, which is just near the Somme battlefield. Tolkien's war experience to a certain degree ended here as well. Uh, after seeing um, action up at Regina Trench, he started to show signs of illness when he was pulled back to the reserve, which was eventually diagnosed as trench fever.
In the second edition to Lord of the Rings, Tolkien wrote in his foreword, An author cannot, of course, remain wholly unaffected by his experience, but the ways in which a story germ uses the soil of experience are extremely complex. One has indeed personally to come under the shadow of war to feel fully its oppression. But as the years go by, it seems now often forgotten that to be caught in youth by 1914 was no less hideous an experience than to be involved in 1939 in the following years. By 1918, all but one of my close friends were dead. <laughs>